Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Here promoting my used outboard motor buying guide as we continue to go through this process with this outboard motor and see what we need to do to do a fresh rebuild so we can have a nice long life motor is what we're looking for. Remember, my used outboard motor buying guide is available for my subscribers until October 13th for free. It's a $20 value. You can shoot me an email at keith at outboarddad.com or send me a comment with your email address so that I can send you over in a PDF form. So today we're going to continue on cleaning up this head. We're going to make sure it's level with our straight edge and our feeler gauge, right? We already know where we're supposed to be at, which is under four thousandths of an inch. We didn't even have two thousandths on that. So I'm, I'm really surprised because the way this was overheated, I would have assumed that the head may have been warped as well. Doesn't look like it, but we're going to double check to be sure. In the same way we clean the cylinder block, I like to take my 120 grit sand cloths, just plumber's uh, aluminum oxide, and we're going to go across this head and clean it up. And then we'll put our straight edge on there and check with our feeler gauge. So I like to go at angles and keep it moving, never going in one spot too long. I shouldn't be removing a lot of material here at all, um, but just in case, I want to make sure I keep moving. And also want to try and make sure, see, I pull on the bottom, keep my finger on the top, so I'm trying to keep my my sand cloth tight so it doesn't bind like it just did. I don't want to slip off and have the file gouge into the edge of the cylinder head. So the other thing we're going to do, I'm not going to go crazy with it right now because I'm not concerned too much about the cleanliness, is fold this sand cloth in half and kind of get into all of these grooves, right? They're actually amazingly pretty clean, so it, it slides pretty well. So we're going to do out, clean out all of these grooves before we, you know, put the new gaskets in to put it together. I may even spray a little bit of my jack of all sprays and let it lay in there just to absorb any corrosion that's in there. And loosen it up but for right now I'm just concerned about getting it clean enough so that I can measure to be sure that we're not warped so we'll get this nice and clean make sure that our straight edge is clean I right, always make sure I wipe everything off before we lay it down and then we'll take our feeler gauge again just like we did we'll go straight across first this time and check the middle not going in there. I like to do it at angles across the bolt holes. There's a reason I do that because the bolt holes are going to get tighter than the center, right? When you torque this down. So I want to make sure those are not up and make sure we can't get this feeler gauge. It's not going in anywhere. So we're probably good. Right, we'll check all of them, especially where our cylinder, oh, So three thousandths, ooh, it's just starting to go in there. So let's bump it up to four thousandths. And let's see if we can get a four thousandths in there. That's why we check these, right? And four will not go in there at all. Let's go back to three, because three was a little tight. So we're within range. I can get it just to, eh, see it's kicking it over a little bit. So let me drop it down to three. Let's see what three does. Let's see, I have a three and a two here, so let's see what it does. So my three, yeah, my three will go in there just barely. It does have to move the straight edge a little bit in order for it to fit in there, but it is fitting in there. Now, I'm mostly concerned about where my O-rings are because that's where I'm going to seal, right? So let's turn this way and see. So it's not going in that way. Let's turn this way. It's not going in that way. So it's just at this angle. And this is why we do the different angles. So let's put our two thousandths and see if two thousandths will go in there. Yeah, 2,000 fits in there. It's still moving. 
is still pushing on my straight edge a little bit, but it fits in there. So we know we're within range. Now, I have a choice now. I can take this to be decked. No need to, it's within the, the specs, but some people want to have a little more perfection. The, the other option is old school, right? So I had an old timer, uh, a lot of old timers that I know, I'm becoming an old timer, um, that has taught me if you're really close, like even if you're at five or six, he said, if you're seven, eight, you got to take it to machine shop. You got to have it decked. There's no, no way around it. But if you're that close on a head, because the head's probably more likely to warp than the block, then I have a piece of half inch plate glass. And I took a belt, a sanding belt from a big belt sander, right? Large, just a Harbor Freight belt. And I will run that on the flat because that plate, plate glass is flat, right? And I'll run that on there. Have to keep cleaning it because if it starts to clump up, you could have high and low spots. And then put it back on the vise and measure it again. And you'll find you can take a thousandth or two off that way and make it straight. But this one's in good shape. We're just going to clean up the rest of it with the grooves and everything. And now we can continue on with some boring. And let's see what we can do and how large we make those holes. We're going to have to do some tight measuring now. Let's do that next. Before I secure my block to the bench and I start really boring to get all the scratches out, I want to measure to see where I'm at. This, I'm assuming, is a standard piston engine. Uh, when I look at the pistons, and I'm going to go ahead with the wire wheel, but it just says up S, which is starboard side. And I'm going to assume that this is the original pistons that were in the engine and their standard size. But I don't, I don't want to assume when I order parts and then get a piston set and I go to put it in the cylinder and it's too small, right? So I want to make sure where I'm at. So I do have a little better Minitoyo micrometer here. So this micrometer is a little better value. It's a little better. And now I'm going to measure to make sure because it's 3.50. That's what it comes from the factory. That's our bore size, right? So our piston size should be slightly smaller, right? Eight thousandths is pretty much what we said in the book. So I'm going to check in the book that 3.5 on the nose. We're going to set this, and then I'm going to put my dial bore gauge in here and zero it out at 3.5 and measure my cylinders, see how far off I am as I bore. So this way I know what piston size to make sure I get the same. I'm going to try and do the same. I think I can get away with a 15 over on all of this. The scratches don't look that bad, but you never know until you start boring to be sure. So let's measure first and take it from there and measure twice. Cut once. Okay, sounds good. Just double checking, look in my book. Standard size is 3.501 is what it says. So we're going to make sure that that's correct. And oversize, it says 0.015 is oversize, which is 3.516 should be your bore size. So there's your difference right there. So now we can go ahead and measure and make sure we have our micrometer set up properly. Get our dial bore gauge in here to make sure it's zeroed out at the exact 3.501. 01's going to be a little tricky to get, but we can get it with this. And then we're going to measure our cylinders as we bore. I am not a machine shop expert. I've learned how to do outboards. So when we look at our Mitotoya, it says right on it, 3 to 4 inch. So 3.5, if you look closely, you can see 0 to 5 here. And if I just crank this in, and you see the zero, zero with the hash mark here, if I keep cranking this in, and I crank it in until my, it's a little bit dirty, let me clean it up. And I crank it in, see I'm at 10, so I'm, that's 510. That's 55. And that's 50, so it says 501. So we're gonna put it at 501 and lock it in. And now we know that's what our bore size is supposed to be. So now I can put this in my vise here carefully. I'm not cranking it down in here to hold it tight, just enough so I can get my dial bore gauge in here. And now I'm gonna zero out my dial bore gauge to 3.501, and now I know my standard, and then we'll check the block to see how much larger we are than that. If you remember, we should be seven and a half to eight, in, eight inch or eight and a half uh, is what the book said for piston wall clearance. So we'd have to go that much larger when we bore. So let's measure this and get this zeroed out. Where we had it when we were testing our out of round is almost exactly where we were with the zero. So I'm pretty sure that's where we're going to be, but we just want to double check. Now we're zeroed out. Now we can go to my block here. 
I'm going to go to my uh, cylinder that was bored or that wasn't as scored first and you can see there we are zeroing out right there. So let's go to the middle one that was scored pretty badly and there we go. See that is two thousandths over. And now we go to the next one. It's pretty close. Now if I turn it this way, two thousandths over, I'm going to turn it this way. Pretty much right on the money. So theoretically, we may be able to make this round again if it's 2,000 soft. That's going to get us to 10,000 piston wall clearance. Probably not a good idea. So let's just double check the rest. Just want to be sure. You know, sometimes you get a block, somebody already did what I did, and they bored one cylinder out. So that's 3.501, 3.5. Add a thousandths. And we're right there. So this top cylinder here is showing me zero right there, but here it's showing me two and a half thousandths over. So that's the one that we really felt uh, when we started boring, that we really felt that vibration from it being out around. So I'm going to start with that one. That looks to be the worst one. And I got to get my bolt back in here to secure my block. And let's start boring and measuring. Okay, so if you looked closely when I was boring, there's a piece of stone missing from this one. It's kind of beat up. It's the one I use first. So I have multiple different stone sets. And why do I have multiple different stone sets? Because I broke some, right? When you're learning how to do this, I had a couple of old blocks. I twisted my arm up really bad, you know, and you just get, get to feel for how this works. So I just beat up a couple of old blocks and threw out a bunch of stones that yes i invested money on i think they're like 30 dollars a set it's nothing crazy uh, you can probably find them online cheaper um, i actually have a whole box full of them because somebody who had some kind of deal online for 100 bucks he's just getting rid of it um, so i have extras kicking around because i know i'm going to keep doing this for, for a long time to come uh, this is a dying art so this beat up one is the one i'm going to use first to get the out of round back to a little better shape as well as take those scratches out. So right now I'm not looking to go that 12 thousandths over, right? Because if we're two thousandths over, I don't want to get too close to where my piston size is because I want to measure the piston when I get it here, right? I know the book tells us the exact measurement it's supposed to be. That doesn't mean that run of pistons through the manufacturing is not going to be off by half a thousandths or something like that. It does happen. So I just want to get the scratches out and then measure to make sure I'm not over the 15 thousandths, right? Because if I'm over it, then I, order, I have to order a, a 20 over set or just maybe for that one piston. So I want to make sure that I just get those scratches out. So I'm going to start with this, get 90% of the scratches out of these cylinders, and then I'll switch to a little nicer uh, stone set that I know is, is cleaner and straighter, and then we'll bring it into knowing that the whole cylinder is clean with no more scoring in it, then we'll measure. And if I'm still beneath, I think I only have to take out maybe five, six thousandths to get there. Then I'll measure and make sure that I haven't gone too far. And then I'll order the piston set, have it come in, measure the pistons themselves, and then I'll bore to that seven and a half, eight thousandths piston wall clearance from that piston, not necessarily from what the book says, right? So now I'm going to be comparing my measurements. So let's just bore this. You saw me start doing it before. I'm just going to start boring some of this out. Um, probably a good idea to wear a pair of safety glasses, just in case a, a stone chips or something like that. And let's see if we can get this rounded out a little bit more. Now I'm not tightening up too much. Let's see, I did a little twist there to make sure it spins. I don't want it to be binding and then hit the trigger and then it spins and hits and then this drill hits me in the face. Not that I've ever done that before. Don't try this at home. Um, so I just want to just take some material out. So you can feel the way it's bouncing. It's that's how that's the out around. So I'm going to keep going until we get closer and closer to a better shape with this and then we'll switch stones.